Welcome to a video tour of the jQuery bar rating demo. So the jQuery bar rating is based on a plugin that we can find over at antenna.io demo jQuery bar rating. And this is basically something that turns a drop down into, well, a bar or star rating. Now in this particular demo, we're using the star rating, but you can use other, uh, 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 other uh, display modes for it as well. So how does it actually work? Well, the basic idea is in rack forms, like many of our additional JS libraries, if we select a page and go into page JavaScript and click this little shortcut right here, we can select it from included additional JavaScript library under jQuery bar rating. So that's step one. If we want to use it, we include that. Now, uh, just as a really quick peek behind the scenes, when we do that, what we're essentially doing is including this code at the top of the page. So this is a uh, link of uh, uh, items that relate to that particular library. And so uh, the, the key here being that this is stuff that you usually don't want to have to include every time you do it. It's kind of annoying to have to, so Rack Forms will just include this for you. However, there's still implementation code in order for this to work. And so the implementation is where this really comes in. Now, the idea with this particular implementation is actually quite simple. We add a drop down to our form, like we've done right here. Uh, in general here, if we want to have uh, the ability to have a blank star rating, we always want to leave the default select item as is. In other words, you don't want a value there. And then we can just simply add our numbers below that. Now, it is important to note that these values can be anything we want for like the star rating, but in general, it's probably going to be easiest to work with numbers. So just for the sake of completeness, this can be any other value that we want. And for some of these uh, items, it actually does make perhaps a little bit more sense to use things like letters uh, for things like this. Now, once we have a dropdown set, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to include some code. Now, if you want to implement this in your own form, this is all you need to do. Literally take the name of your dropdown. So in this case, I have rating right here. And then literally take your code that we have in the sample job, copy and paste it into yours, and then just change this value right here. Let me open that in the advanced editor where we have this hashtag and then the name rating. Just change that to the name of your particular dropdown. Now, it is important to note that this dropdown name is so important uh, in, in general in rack forms that this name is always shown in the dark black box or dark gray box whenever we mouse over an element. This is our ID of the field and that's what this plugin needs is an ID. So we're basically saying in this code, here is the style sheet that we're using. In this case, we're using the font awesome stars style sheet. And then we are going to select that theme and attach our buyer rating to that particular element. And so that's how that works. And so when I run my form now, we're going to go ahead and essentially show our ranking right there. Now, this particular job, though, takes it a few steps further in that, well, what happens when we want to submit this to a database and then perhaps show it? So the way that works is actually pretty simple. All we're doing here behind the scenes is converting a dropdown. We're actually hiding it and then just replacing it with some UI elements. But the dropdown still actually exists. So I can write this to SQL just by saying, in this case, insert into the FB demo table and then saying, grab that form field of rating. Now, this is going to then put into the database a number value. So here you can say I've submitted this once. I've got four right here. And we can go ahead and submit this again and maybe select a different ranking, so a five star. So we'll submit this through, and then we get this page right here in the demo. <clears throat> now, if we look at the database here, you'll see that I selected the fifth star, so I get the number value of five. Now, this job is set up to actually capture that value from our insert statement. So I'm actually taking a session variable and equaling it to retval, which is the last insert ID database expert recognize this as this value right here. So this is the primary auto increment field of 203. So we now have a session variable with the number 203. And that actually relates to this entry right here. Now, the reason why we do that is because we actually want to display that ranking from our database, both in this page and in our builder page. So we can actually check that out. So if I say show in form page, what's going to happen is this. So I'm running a database query. Let me scoot this over here. And the database query is simply saying, select the name from FE demo where the ID is equal to some value. And the value is equal to that ret val that we saved in the previous step. So therefore, it goes in the database and pulls out this value. Now, 
in order to actually pre-populate this with the value, I basically have a dropdown, same as we did in the first example. I've changed its name so it's unique. In this case, it's rating display. And then for the values, I do something really important. I have the same values that I had before, in other words, the blank first value, and then my numbers one through five. But for a dynamic default value, I use this little shortcut right here to say, go ahead and put in the name field from the database. Really, really important that we do that because now what's gonna happen is when I build this uh, form right here, and when I run it, it's going to pre-populate this list right here with these values, but it's gonna set the selected value to whatever the database query for this guy is right here. And because the database query is actually returning five, well then it's gonna populate our star right here. Now the good thing is nothing else needs to change about this code right here. Literally all I've done is I've just changed the name of the rating item to be rating display. That is, I've said, you are now going to populate this guy. Now, the case here for Builder is much the same. Um, this guy, once again, doesn't do anything too special, though it does a little something different. We'll take a look at that in a second. But for the actual Builder page itself, I basically run a query, select ID name from FB Demo, where the ID is once again equal to that retval. So the retval that is going to populate when I uh, run this, whatever that last uh, insert ID was. So right now it's 203. And once again, we can see that that was this value right here. And it shows the star value. Now there is a little bit of specialness going on here. So the first is, if I actually look at my template right here, I actually went ahead and am using an update value for my token right here. So I'm saying grab the name field, make it a select item, and then I'm gonna pre-populate that with the values from this val array right here. Now vals is actually coming from right here, and vals is actually an array of possible values. So note here, we got a note that says the empty first character. What we're basically building is the same thing that our dropdowns right here have. In other words, this is an array of potential values that this guy can have. And so it's blank first value, and then one, two, three, four, five. So that means that when I run this form, Rackforms is basically going to convert this into a select item that has the potential values of one, two, three, four, five. And because this is an update field, it's going to get the value from the database, which in this case means it's going to get the value five. So that leaves then the actual uh, JavaScript code that we use to actually power this guy. So right now, if I didn't actually have this JavaScript code, it wouldn't do anything, which makes sense because the JavaScript code for here and here is how we're actually powering this. The only trick is that in this case, if we think about it, we know that this field is called rating display. It's never going to change. We know that this field is called rating. It's never going to change. Therefore, in our code, I can simply hard code this function call to that particular field. So this gets rating and this guy gets rating display because that's what the field is called. However, in this guy, we run into a bit of a problem because this name can obviously be dynamic and it will be dynamic. And as a matter of fact, as we'll see in the last example, we can actually have several results that come from this. So if we actually look at this now, what we actually have is a select with an ID of name zero. And it's zero because this is the first result that we have. However, if we had three or four results, again, as we'll see in the last example, this would be name one, name two, name three, etc., etc. Now I should point out that this ID value right here, as it applies to a select item in a builder page, is a brand new feature. This did not exist before build 870, which is as of today, uh, January 26th, it'll be coming out uh, on uh, Friday. So if you're seeing this anytime past January of 2016, you already have this feature. But if you're using an older version, you will need to update to get this. The idea though, is that we have a dropdown with a select ID that's going to change. It's gonna be the name of the field, plus an index. So in order to use this then, we simply wanna modify our JavaScript code here to actually use a bit of a loop. Now I'm not saying this is perfect code right here, but you notice that this is the exact same as what we had before. That is we invoke the selector on bar rating, but now we're actually using a loop to do it. So I'm basically gonna to count to 100 right here, and I'm gonna say get the element by ID with name and an index. So it's gonna start at zero, and it's gonna loop through, and for every item that it actually finds, it's gonna apply the star to it. And then as soon as we find no matching result, in other words, as soon as we're done, we're just going to leave the loop. And so that's how we get then this to actually display our bar rating. Now that's not to say this is the only way we can do it. We can further modify our code just a little bit to actually select, in this case, all of the matching records from the database. Let's take a look at this real quick. So this now is gonna show a bunch of blank star ratings for items that didn't even have a rating. 
So you can see here that these names are actually what the field in this database is supposed to be, just like actual names, but our last two had the value of four and five. And so the rating system is actually intelligent enough to know that if we don't have a matching value, it's just gonna be blank. However, if we do have matching values, it's gonna properly populate them. Again here, the code is essentially the same. I have here now, instead of a select statement that actually goes on a specific ID, we actually just select all values and then this code, if we look at it right here, is doing once again the exact same thing. We're simply creating a loop. We're going through all the IDs with the name plus an index. And for everyone that it actually finds, until it doesn't find a matching record, it's simply going to apply the star rating item to that item. And then so we get this nice list right here. So that is a tour of this job right here. We can capture stars and then we can display them in various different ways that are supported by rec forms.